know Your ass better call somebody It's me, it's me, it's the D-O-double-G, the road dog Jesse James And you're listening to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13 to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to Live and in Color with Wolfie D. I'm your host, Wolfie D. And I got my friend Jimmy across the street. What's up, my dude? Man, what is up? I, I love, you know, your Chris Berman, my name. Chris Berman, <laughs> my name. Oh, then he, oh, and then he Jimmy across the street. And, but if they, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I love it. Every, you know, every like four or five episodes I add on to my name is pretty funny, man. I love that. But doing good, man. We're, you know, just kind of living the dream. You know, my wife has got COVID. Hopefully I don't well, get it, but, you know. That living the dream, actually, Jimmy? No, it's not, you know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, come on. Living the, the so COVID weird. dream. I don't know if you've ever mentioned this, is that me and you have the same girlfriend wife name yeah i'm with michelle you're with a michelle too so what do we think about those michelles (laughs) they're psycho (laughs) no i'm just kidding you know what i know that they both love the hell out of us i'll say that so we're we're lucky not wait to kick this shit off today this is gonna be i think probably uh, one of the best ones we've had man one of my greatest friends in, in in this world man i love him to death man i just can't wait uh for you to hear what he's gonna say i can't uh, i can't wait to talk to him i mean can i say something before we get him on the line here so here's the thing when we first started this podcast you kind of sent me like a message saying here's some guys i can get and yeah. i was like oh my god that's amazing yeah. and so you said road dog at the time and then some he was working for nxt wwe right that was going to be tough, you know, but you said once I can get him, I feel like we can get him. And then he signed a deal with ad free shows and now he's got his own podcast. And I thought all chances were gone because Me I mean, <laughs> he's got his own show. It's like, yeah. yeah, Wolfie, you go on his show, but I don't I just didn't see him ever coming on the show. And I was hoping some way. And then you sent me a text. We had another show planned out. Not planned yeah. out, but it, we were we were putting it in in the processes like how like, we do. We just call up bullshit. Hey, what do you want to do next week? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you said you sent me a text. You were like, "So we're not doing that anymore." And I'm like, "Huh?" <laughs> and you're like, "We're gonna get Road Dog instead." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" You could have yeah. heard me. I like jumped off the couch. I was like, "Holy <laughs> crap! This is huge!" Yeah, Man, absolutely. He's one of the coolest dudes ever in the world, and his whole family is, and we'll, we'll get into that too. Uh, Can't I, wait. Family, I was, God, man, he's just one of my favorite people ever, man. He really is. Yeah. yeah. So he's- without further ado, you want to take a commercial break? We'll come back and talk to my good friend, the Road Dog. Right after these messages. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. Hey folks, to get your official Live It In Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live It In Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, folks, welcome back. And like I said, this guest, oh my goodness, man, this is one of the greatest, not not only wrestlers that I know, but like 
people, like good person, good family. I love him. I love his family, his dad, his brothers, wrestled all of them. And just absolutely one of my favorite people on the planet. And I'm so grateful that uh, he has come on here with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, what does he say? Uh, people of all ages around the world, it's the road <laughs> dog, does it, James? <laughs> oh, man. You, it was so touching up until you mangled my entrance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could have, I could have went. Oh, you didn't know, but I think that uh, I, I, you know, uh, I'll bring I in the guitar it, I part. Get it. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you add the guitar riff in post. Can I say no, something? Hey, bro, yeah. yeah, please, man. About you you already music. said a, a lot, though. I'm Thank sorry. You for that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So your music got me in hot water with a legend. So Billy is working a show. I did a little managing work here and there. Nothing major. Not trying to put myself over here. But Billy was working a show and Doug Gilbert. <laughs> Please don't. The same show. Okay. And Doug and Billy are sitting there. <laughs> and I walk up to Billy and it seemed like there was a lull in the conversation. And I go to Billy. I would say, Hey, sir, nice to meet you. Always a fan. Thank you for all you've done. I always really love your guy's entrance music. And he says, cool. Thank you. Thank you. And Doug looks at me like I just smacked him in the mouth. <laughs> and he says, well, ain't that about a mark? <laughs> and I, I, I guess it's true. You can, you can see that. Yeah. Happening. No, look, hey, Doug, uh, look, that was a pretty accurate statement, Jimmy, that Doug made. <laughs> yes, it is. I agree. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I totally thought you were going to say that, that Billy was the a-hole in the situation. No. Uh, because that's part of the course. Uh, but <laughs> the fact that Doug was makes it even funnier. <laughs> Doug was the, the bad guy in that one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Doug's, Doug's never, never the bad guy. The bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Man, hey, I want to tell the people um like how me and you met and stuff. And it was it's it's kind of cool because it involves my kid and stuff like that. Uh you had come and you had come to the Memphis territory. Uh me and Jamie were there. And, uh, some kind of way, uh, I found out that you were moving out of an, an apartment that Jill Jeff's, uh, late wife had, had found for you and, uh, and, and Phineas Tex, whatever we want to call him. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you guys were like, yeah, you can move in here, move in here. And I had a kid on the way and, and that's how me yeah. and you met really and how we developed our relationship. Yeah. And Hey, which that was your daughter. Who's now how old? 28. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Make you feel old. Yeah, hey, uh, 20 does. years ago. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's crazy. That's what we were, we were moving out of there. Uh, yeah. me and, uh, and, and naked Midian, uh, we're moving <laughs> out, out of there and, uh, and you, you were, had a baby on the way and we're moving in and uh -huh. I was moving out I just met my wife. So I was yeah. moving to Memphis to live with right. her. Tex yeah. was Tex was leaving the territory and going back home, I guess, um, yeah. or either we I just kicked him out. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Hard to believe he's a he's a chef now. He's a chef. I know it's incredible, man. It's, it just uh, I mean he can he, he can cook too. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, man. He can, he and, can and, flat out cook, man. So <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> That's how that's how me and you came to know each other. And of course, I mean, growing up as a kid, I knew who your dad was. Absolutely knew who Brad was. And it, it, it's honestly very cool that I can sit here and say I've worked with every one of you guys, every one of you, and that is special to me. Wow. And uh, me, me, and you have talked about this, man. Your dad was Brad the best. Do what was Brad the best? Brad was so god dang smooth, man. I think me and you had, because like we we did stuff that was, uh, me and Brad only worked one time. And it was kind of yeah. a cold match. And it was, you know, off the charts to people watching it probably. But in my head, I was like, man, I'd really like to do this if we had an angle. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, and get to know uh, each other a little bit in absolutely. the ring. I mean, it was still good, but it was like, I think uh, even, even I feel like the guys in the back probably thought we was going to do more or better. I don't know. But if it would have just been an angle, it would have been a lot better. But like me and you did yeah. stuff, like we had angles together in Memphis. And, and yeah. Things. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and, and I got you to work with your dad. 
Scotty, Stevie, I mean, all y'all are so good and, and it just feels good. But what I was what I was going back to was that article I was telling you about. Your dad used to write uh an article in the what was it, the Pensacola um Yeah. Newspaper? Yeah, the uh the Sentinel or something like that. But I think it right. was the Gulf Breeze. Yeah. And, and I think he actually brought it to me and handed it to me. It was at TNA. And uh, he was working there. Wasn't he like commissioner or something like that? But anyway, yeah, he brings me this newspaper clipping, and it's got my picture. And he, it's a write up that he is just, I mean, put me over to the moon on this thing. And that, I mean, when I say it right now, it, it, I got my hairs on my arms stand up because that made me feel so good, man. Coming from him, it was awesome. Wow. Yeah, I remember he used to write that, and I don't remember that thing word for word, but I remember it meant a lot to you. And look, yes. I think that's who my, you know, I've never heard anybody say anything negative about my dad or or my brothers or anything. And it's always, of course, they wouldn't say anything negative to me about my brothers or my or my dad. But <laughs> right. I like to think, yeah, I like to think that he was a good dude. You know what I mean? And yeah. that people who meant thing to him uh, had a special place in his heart. You know what I mean? And I think. I think that was you, Wolfie. It was, it was weird, man. You you were different than Jamie, and you were, I, it, it, so, you remind me so much of my brother C from time to time, um, <laughs> just, just in how you act, things you'd say, and things you do, and it's just, yeah. it's weird. It's a, a weird resemblance uh, that I've had with you since, uh, since twenty eight years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you believe it's been that long? That's crazy, man. So, oh so Lord. then l- let's talk a little bit about Memphis. And there was this one story that, uh, <laughs> you know, and we don't have a script here, folks, but <laughs> I did want to <laughs> remind him of this. <laughs> so I called him uh, earlier. So there was a time in Memphis and I can't remember who you worked. It, I, I, I do not remember. Maybe it was Brian. And, uh, at the end of it, it, you were getting heat, getting heat, getting heat. And then they sent all the baby faces, kind of sent them one by one, but a little bit in a group. And the deal was no contact. <laughs> your ass your ass was supposed to, to bail. And for whatever reason, you fought every single one of us with uh, <laughs> mallet-like punches. And uh, <laughs> the, the only person that you uh, actually sold for finally after, I don't know, it was like, 10 it seemed like 10 minutes it wasn't 10 minutes but it, it, lawler came out and you started selling for him and when when you did that that place went crazy so <laughs> like, that was i talk like about i had that, to man. sell for lawler <laughs> i had to yeah. sell for lawler right running the joint <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so so i i remember that vaguely to be quite honest with you yeah. i don't um i guess i didn't know what everybody was doing. Maybe I forgot everybody was hitting the ring, <laughs> but I just, I guess, I, and I had just come back from Germany too. So I thought, you yes. know what? Yeah. You want to get me out of this ring? Get me out of this ring. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, it was so funny. Cause we were yeah, all, sorry. we were all like, what's he doing? What's he doing? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> don't they call that yeah, the I king know. of the mountain? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nobody. Nobody knew what I was doing, including me. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Uh, Jimmy, go ahead, man. What you got? I, I'll just say this right out. So where I am from, I'm really close to Bristol, Tennessee, Virginia, in a little town, Lebanon, Virginia. Never heard of it. It's okay. But growing up there, there were three people that people loved. It was Jesus, Dale Earnhardt, and the Bullet Bob Armstrong. So <laughs> all my life, I've always remembered Bullet Bob and and these powerful promos that he would give of just so passionate. And I remember, you know, I would see him wrestle different people in little small high school auditoriums and stuff. And I always thought that man could punch through steel. You know what I mean? Almost yeah. like a bullet, yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, look, it, it makes me smile so big to hear you say that. And that's dang good company. You got him in there. Um, uh, well, Jesus, anyway, I don't know about right. Earnhardt. <laughs> sure. Either way. <laughs> but, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, look, that's, he did. He, he, he spoke the, like my dad spoke the language of the people, man. And, yeah. and, you know, uh, 
D- Dusty Rhodes was another one that kind of did that. Uh, I don't yeah. know if he was this, his was his was more gimmicky a little bit and charactery. Um, right. Dad was dad was heartfelt and spoke because uh, he had really good promo skills, but it, it wasn't skills. It was just a gift from God, you know. And so yeah. he could cut a promo and be passionate about it and believe the. It made you believe the words that were coming out of his mouth. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so absolutely he spoke to you in those promos. Yeah. He could he could promo you into the building. And man, not a lot of people could do that then. And hell, nobody could do it now. <laughs> Right, right. You yeah. just felt it, you know. So yeah, man. The, yeah. the the old. I can't explain to people that don't get it when they're like, "Oh, script did you know script?" No, no, no. I, it has to come from the heart, man. I, and I, I just see it. Like when I watch stuff now, I'm like, "That's not them talking." You know what I mean? It just it's not. Nobody's speaking from their heart. I don't think. Yeah, no, because it's scripted. I mean, right. you know, it, it, but that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's so lost and I don't understand why we let it get that way, but whatever yeah, it is, what I, it is. I don't, I don't, I don't think we let it get that way. I think it just kind of got that way. I think yeah. for me, I was writing the show and when I'm, when I'm, uh, you know, working with uh, working, uh, writing a promo and working with a different talent, I, I gotta hear, I gotta know how the talent would say it. So I can't right. write it down and have you say it like that. Yeah. I need to write it down and then have him uh, translate it into right. you know what I mean? Like a, so Exacto Mundo. Yeah. Dude, I, I think I've told Jimmy this story. When when me and Jamie, we got our first audition for WWF uh, in, in 1995, we went up there. And I had never seen a teleprompter in my life, dude. And we go up there, and they've got this shit written. They want us – because we're working – they give us a, a job guy win, and then they give us a, a, a two-segment match with Billy and Bart, the smoking guns, for the titles, right? And, and yeah. So it was a competitive match or whatever. But they had us do uh, two little promos and they they start shooting all these the words up in our faces and i can't keep up with you know <laughs> me and jamie i swear to god we told him we said is there any way you can turn that off and just tell us what you want us to say and let us do it our way they were like oh, oh, oh yeah sure okay uh and then <laughs> we did it no shit and they started clapping it was like okay what what's so great about that it just yeah. well, I, I, no i'll tell you what i'll tell you what's so great about that not a lot of people can do it you know yeah. so so when somebody do it it sticks out like a sore thumb and it's and it and it uh warrants the applause but look that's what memphis tv does for you it puts you on yeah. live television every yeah. week then yeah. you work every night of the week so you can hone your craft now yeah. while you're honing your craft you're also losing weight because you're starving to death but it's, <laughs> it's part of the you know what i'm part of the, part of the paying your dues and all that and and yeah. when people are there a while got paid a little better people that you know i wasn't getting paid very well but i was i was getting paid better than some um yeah. because of my because of my relationship with jeff and then jerry and and so yeah. um yeah i was i was look that was a great place to be man a great place to learn i was I that's quit the, WWE 95. that's the the big thing to me man is like these the dudes today what we had, like you just said, working all those nights, and we're working with dudes that have actually done it for a while. Like these guys are working with each other, the blind leading the blind, so they're not really teaching each other anything. You see, what I, you know. Oh, a hundred, dude. Bill Dundee taught me more by punching me in the face really hard. And, <laughs> and, you know what I'm saying about yeah, that? Yeah. Like it's he taught me how to be a heel. He taught right, me yeah. how to when 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 to when to beg off, when to leave him alone, when to right. and he would just pop up and shop shoot me one right in my face, you know? Right. And it was yeah. like, Oh, I got it. I got that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, I, I I was what, eighteen or nineteen years old and I was getting to work with Danny Davis, the 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 man that made OVW every single night. I worked with him for shit almost a year or something you you talk about a clinic shit <laughs> danny Dude, was one I, of those uh, guys man that could he, he taught me like he'd hip toss me and as i'm taking the bump he's telling me in my ear what to do next as i'm falling yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i mean yeah. wow yeah. that's he was awesome it's just, dude. And that's what i pre- that's what i pressure uh, younger talent to do now to communicate, man, communicate, yeah. communicate, and don't worry if somebody hears you. I'd yeah. rather them hear you, not hurt somebody, than uh, than yeah, not yeah. know what's coming. 
as you're springing off the ropes. But yeah. hey, Danny Day like was him and uh, Kenny Wayne were one of my favorite tag teams ever. Uh, yeah. The Nightmares, yeah, and, uh, and they and did stuff that I ain't never seen, and I loved. They, they came down here and worked for a while in uh, Continental or Southeastern. I don't remember which it was at the time, but the yeah. Alabama territory. And I, I, I love watching them. I learned a bunch just watching them. Yeah. But, hey, let me ask you this, man. I, I'm not sure that me and you have ever talked about this because, okay, like y- your brothers were all, they were all in the business before you, right? You were the last one to get no. into the business? Yep. Okay. So, and, and we, we know about you, you went to Desert Storm, all that stuff. So when did you go, I want to get in the business? I wanted to get in the business right when I got out of high school. Uh-huh. But I was, yeah. I was six foot four and 165 pounds. <laughs> Knew it wasn't, you know what I mean? You were, you were not Randy Hales. <laughs> no, I was Randy Hales uh, without <laughs> uh, the dip in. Um, and, yeah, and it, it, it was not in the cards, man. So I thought, you know what, my father was a Marine. I'll join the Marine Corps. And while in the Marine Corps, I'll put some weight on and I'll start working out and I'll, you know, yeah. and I'll get in shape. Old deal. Uh, so yeah, I knew I wanted to be a wrestler and, and kind of wanted to do that the whole time. Uh, but then I, I loved the Marine Corps. So I was going to reenlist in the Marine Corps, but then I couldn't reenlist in the uh, military occupational specialty that I wanted to. Uh, mm. and so I was like, you know what, I'm big enough. I'll just start wrestling now. Um, yeah. I wanted to be a drill instructor. I wanted to be a drill instructor on Paris Island. I thought, Hmm. That's the, probably the the baddest dude I know in my mind is a drill instructor on Paris Island. I thought I want to be that guy, um, right. but I couldn't reinvent to, to try to do that. So I thought, okay, uh, now's the time. That's super interesting. <laughs> the drill sergeant. <laughs> I could see I'm, you doing that for real though. Yeah, uh, yeah I would love it. Hey, <laughs> do you remember the time it was uh, WrestleMania 13? And me and you went to uh, to the movies, and we went and saw Liar Liar, Jim Carrey's movie. And dude, <laughs> yeah, it did, it I don't know if you out. remember what I remember, but we okay back then <laughs> we were we were probably really high, and I'm not talking about anything yeah. crazy. I'm about we smoked some good weed, but we went in there and we laughed. It was like death comedy jam in there, man. It was like I think me and him were the only uh, <laughs> Jimmy. Me and him were the only white dudes in there. I think. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, dude, I remember getting up. I was laughing so hard that I ran up and down yeah. the aisles. There were people. <laughs> I mean, were there not people just standing up? It was like deaf comedy. Hey, but, so you were running up and down the aisle and nobody was even looking at uh, taking a second glance because everybody right. was popping <laughs> and right. in the air. And <laughs> one, one dude did hand springs down to the front and then did a big twist. <laughs> Yeah, I think somebody's head exploded. I'm not sure. <laughs> but no, that hey. was funny. And, and, and then what, we went to the zoo. Did we go to the zoo or something? Yeah, yeah, we went to the Chicago Zoo, too. Uh, yeah, that was not, we were probably no better in no better condition on that excursion. <laughs> That's hilarious. And then I had somebody, oh my God, somebody showed me a video. I think it might be on YouTube, but it's me and you. Uh, we were at the, what was that hotel they had us in there in Chicago? The uh, the Wyndham or something like that. But anyway, we were yeah. walking with all the people and stuff. And my ass had on a god dang t-shirt that said, hey, Elmo, tickle this. It was an arrow pointing down. <laughs> oh my gosh, Wolfie D. <laughs> I, I swear to God, and I remember that shirt, but when I saw that, I was like, I did not. <laughs> yeah, but remember, I had like a t shirt and then like a flannel sleeveless shirt you over did. that. Yeah, it was yes. the style though. That was, that was the yes. style. It was a, yeah, it was a different, it was a different time, man. It was kind of grungy. Yes, yeah. that, I was fixing to say you had the grunge thing going on, and I was just yeah. a dirt ball kind of with that shirt. <laughs> that was like a Myrtle Beach classic for me, yes. right there. I remember yeah. seeing the Hey Elmos shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the black the black shirt with a wolf's head on it from the gas station. <laughs> That's so funny. That's awesome. Let's take a quick time out. 
and get a word from one of my dope ass sponsors and we'll be right back with more live and in color with wolfie d Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're gonna wanna call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, BowieHomes.com. That's B-U-I-E Homes.com. Or you can email him at BenBowie34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the Rockstar Realtor. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. Getting engaged is a moment worth cherishing. A one-of-a-kind ring that you design at Blue Nile can help your love sparkle. Just choose your diamond and setting. When you've found the one, you'll get it delivered right to your door. Finding the right engagement ring can be nerve-wracking. At Blue Nile, you'll have the expert guidance needed and a diamond guarantee that ensures you're getting the highest quality at the best price. Cherish all of life's moments and save up to 30% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com. Support for Live and in Color with Wolfie D is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code WOLFIE at manscaped.com. If my math's correct, that's about 8 million balls. So I've got a few that are going to be like quick answers, but but I want to have a little fun with this because, you know, you guys can talk all night and I'm not going to get in your way, but there are a few things here. So the best singing professional wrestler, Coco Beware or the roadie, Jesse James. No, wait, what? Say, say the question one more time. The best singing professional wrestler. Oh, yeah, the roadie for sure. Okay, <laughs> got it. All right. So the best <laughs> guitarist. Honky Tonk Man or Jeff Jarrett? <laughs> oh, oh, wow. I'm going to go with Mountain Rock. Okay, I like it. I think you're right, by the way. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Best wrestler song, okay? With My Baby Tonight or Tim Horner's version of Shameless? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I will pay for advertising money right now if you just play the whole song of him singing. <laughs> I will definitely do that because I have that on cassette, by the way. So. <laughs> well, I'm shameless when it comes to loving you. I'll do anything you want me to. I'll do anything at all. And I'm standing. Here for all the world to see No, baby, that's what's left of me I don't have very far to fall You know now I'm not a man Who's ever been insecure About the world I've been living in I don't break easy I have my pride But if you need to be satisfied I'm shameless Oh, honey, I don't have a prayer Every time I see you standing there, I go down upon my knees. And I'm changing, swore I'd never compromise. Oh, but you convince me otherwise, I'll do anything to please. You see, in all my life, I've never found what I couldn't resist, what I couldn't turn down.
baby. I'm the goof um, that bought I'm gonna it. Say, yeah, I'm going to say with my baby tonight. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. Okay. I'm gonna hey, go wait, out a and then, wait a minute, Jimmy. Wait a minute. How did yeah. we are the nation of domination get the not thrown in there? Come on. We are the nation. I'm a lava and in color. Don't diss the man. Over bum rush your mother. Now listen what I'm saying. It's for real, not playing. Farouk is the man. Hit your knees and start praying. We are the nation of domination. He's harder than a rock and he can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you wanna get dropped. The boys from the hood are on the MIC Spitting out the rhyme is J.C. Ice and Wolfie D Well, this this would just, you know, being stupid, man <laughs> You know, okay. trying to be a funny guy here So, okay, <laughs> and then also my last one is Have you ever had a band? Have you ever sang for a band? Yes, I cool. sang for a band called Living Insanity Okay And uh, the participants or the uh, the band members were myself Nick Patrick, the referee from WCW, uh, Max Payne, a.k.a. What? Man Mountain Rock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and two other guys, one called Dr. Squash. Uh, we called him Dr. Squash. And then the drummer, his name was Kenny, and I don't remember his last name. Uh, was that, that was, was Dr. It. Squash a wrestler, too? Yes. I think I remember that name. Uh, what was it, ICW or something like that, maybe? Yeah, maybe. He with, was, with, he was not good. Same place that Max <laughs> was, right? I can't, I can't remember. He was opposite of good at wrestling. I got you. <laughs> but he was really good at like playing keyboards and producing the music and stuff. We actually yeah. have have uh, the better part of, of probably 15 songs. Wow. Uh, still there that haven't been, been put out or anything that Max, Max and I uh, have reconnected. And he shared those with me. It was incredible, man. So something, oh. maybe something, something will pop out of there in the future, maybe. Oh, man. I, I'm, 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 that's not I'm even an, a question. Yeah, <laughs> I'm anticipating an ad-free show record label. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's awesome. So that's all my quick little questions. Thank you for that. So. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about, okay, once you you took off, went to uh, WWEF, whatever it was back then, GF Elemental P. Um, but, I mean, you kind of lost contact, you know, once I was gone from there. I want to know about that period of your life where, man, because you, you some bitches were, were over, like, like not many people get over, man. What what was it like, and how do you think, like, because you in Memphis was one thing, but then that, oh, you didn't know came out of you, to me, like, <laughs> it was like two different people, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? You got there, and then you just let loose, man. How did you, what made you come up with that, and how do you think that happened? I I actually don't know, Wolfie, and I, and I, I, I you saying that makes me think about it differently. It makes me change my perspective because look, the way I saw it, I was doing the same kind of crap in Memphis. You know what I mean? Or I thought I was anyway. It, but, well, <laughs> it, but, but two at the same time, I guess maybe, but when you got the machine behind you, it's different. And then you, I mean, you didn't so have the catchphrase. You didn't have, you know, the just the shit that you did that like really stood out that people remember, man. I mean, everybody that's a wrestling fan knows. Oh, you didn't know? They know exactly what yeah. that means. They know what suck it means. They know all that shit. And and you were a part of that, man. And like, it just had to be a cool ride, and for you guys to come up with with shit that was uh, that'll be etched in time. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And look, of course, we didn't know at the time it would be like that. Uh, and, and the ride was really fast. Um, and the rise was really fast. And the fall was fast and hard. And you know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah, it was, look, it was, it was, it was, you know, it was what everybody who puts a pair of boots on dreams for. Right. And, yeah. and, while while I loved and learned and all of that in Memphis and, and, and not making any money and loving what I was doing and learning from people and, and learning with you and learning with Jamie, you know what I mean? All of us together and Tracy teaching mm -hmm. me stuff, Tracy's mother. Yeah. Um, it was, it was so cool. But then, yeah, then I think you hit the nail on the head when you say the machine got behind me, man. And, and yeah, then yeah. I was on a big, platform and so holy mackerel maybe the same stuff i was doing in memphis was cool to us but maybe there's a bigger you know memphis is kind of hip 
and, yeah. and, and yeah. you're yeah. hip. And the time was kind of hip. And so I don't know, it, it felt good. And maybe when that bigger audience saw it, they hadn't seen it like that before. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I yeah. Memphis produced several talents kind of that I bit from, you know what I mean? <laughs> that I stole yeah. from. Um, and so I, I guess, I guess the bigger platform just hadn't seen that kind of, yeah. I don't know, weird, but I also took advantage of it, man. I thought, you know, every time I get to go out there, I want to, I want to try to do something that people are talking about the next day. I want to try to do something that stands out from everybody else on the show. And yeah, you know, it, look, oh, you didn't know was it was all mine. It was me and and Brian Lee uh, ribbing each other <laughs> backstage, and we say, we used to say, "Oh, you better fax somebody." Oh, you better because back then it was it was painters still. You better page somebody. Um, and so, and so literally, I said, "Hey, I'm going to say that on the mic tonight." It was at a live event. He was like, "No, you won't." And I and so it just it just was fell into place, man. The music went down, down, down. down. Oh, yeah. you didn't. <laughs> Yeah and, uh, yeah, and it just happened. And so I thought that felt good. I'm going to do it again the next night. It felt good again. And then I got it on TV and that's all you got to do. Right. Just get it on TV a couple of times and everywhere right. you go, people are doing. It. Yeah. That's awesome. Totally. It's so cool to me that, uh, I didn't know that about Brian being a part of that, which was my other partner, you know, uh, yeah. he, I, yeah. I love Brian. He is one of the funniest dudes on the face of the planet. He's like you, man. <laughs> Two are a lot alike. I can see y'all getting uh, yeah, along. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to keep up with him. <laughs> he was at, uh, I saw him uh, last year at a convention, and that was the first time I'd seen yeah. him since the DNA days. Was it, was it and, you that uh, sent me a picture? Of him? Probably, probably, yeah. And yeah, uh, since then, he gave me his number, and I can't get a hold of him again. So <laughs> he just kind of went back to doing his little uh, incognito thing he does. Oh, I love it. You can't get a hold of him. Uh-uh. A hold of him. <laughs> that's what the, that's Buddy Wayne talk right there. That's uh, oh, that's son. also uh, son. That's go also and grab a, a, you got to grab a hold. <laughs> that's what uh, what Jimmy Golden used to say too. Grab, put a hold on me, son. <laughs> remember uh jamie told buddy wayne we couldn't do a finish one night he was trying to beat us we had the belts and it was in a spot show in one of his towns you know had nobody there or whatever and he was wanting these wcw power plant guys to beat us <laughs> jamie said we can't do that buddy he said, we got these belts we're going to tv in the morning we can't lose them here tonight and he said jamie do you think that these people actually believe that you two can beat these boys? <laughs> Jamie said, <laughs> I don't know, but I'll tell you what they will believe is we ain't working tonight. <laughs> Jamie <left. laughs> and, and buddy, I'll never forget. He had two things and one in each hand, two things of popcorn. And he, or like raises his hands up in there and he goes, you goddamn prima donna son of a bitches. And he threw the bottle <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was the only time I think uh, we ever, but we did walk out on that night. <laughs> and for the listener, Buddy Wayne looks like a cartoon televangelist, essentially, in my opinion. Yeah. You know? oh, oh, man, that's very accurate. Yeah, like, uh, what's his uh, family guy, Peter? Yeah, he kind of looks like yeah. Peter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He does look like <laughs> old school wrestling talk. I know you got some dates or something. I don't have any dates, but let me, Wolfie, do you remember when, uh, I think we were going to Jonesboro, Arkansas and, uh, my wife called and said, I think I'm having my baby. And y'all turned around and just took me back. And, and I don't know yeah. if y'all went to the town or not, but y'all took I, me back. I and I think you're yeah, the first I, one to see my baby. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. Of course, yeah. And uh, I think it was a town because me and Jamie got lost because <laughs> we went in there and the, I think the town was uh, pronounced or it was spelt T, let's see, T-E-R-E-L. And we thought it was Terrell and they pronounced it Turl. And so we asked them, how do we get there? Whatever. And we pulled up. All of a sudden, we get to this. We're going down this two-lane road. And it says, welcome to Earl. <laughs> 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 no, it was Turl, not Earl. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were the first one to see my baby girl. <laughs> That's hilarious, That's awesome. man. Good stories. We got good stuff like that, man. Yeah, we did it. 
so long, dude. Um, do you ever wish, like thinking back, do you ever wish, man, I would have wish I would have been sober through all that? You know yes. what I mean? Do you ever? No. I, I wish, like, okay, that's a question to where, like, I would say I wouldn't take anything for the experiences that I've had in my life. Wouldn't take anything for it. Amen. But, Amen. <laughs> but I probably could have done a little better had I have uh, just, you know, been more serious about it, man. I, me and Jamie had this DVD that we put out like years ago with like all of our, our best matches and we called it, we were just having fun. <laughs> That's what we were doing, man. Yeah. We were just having fun. I didn't take, dude, I was, the first time I, I, I was on WWF, I was like 19 or 20 years old. You know what I mean? It was like, I was yeah. just to be there and hey this is never gonna end <laughs> right yeah but, well uh, look that would have worked better. out more you know and stuff like that yeah that's so that's and look that's why i asked the that. drugs <laughs> <laughs> that's why yeah. i asked that well look i wouldn't yeah. change a thing i had to go through what i had to go through to get to right here and i'm and that's I'm, it. I'm proud of the uh Proud of the proud of the journey, not proud of some of the things I made, some of the decisions I made in life right. or, or business. Uh, right. And yeah, wondered man, how far could I have gone had I not cheated myself with active addiction and, oh, and, and alcohol. And yeah. uh, and so I don't, you know, no no, re- no regrets. Just uh, man, I wonder, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Me too, man. I I, I think that, and like I said it on a couple of shows like people kind of took it out of context that you know john cena and too cool that was pg-13 i don't care what nobody says but i probably could have had myself in a little bit better of a position to be one of those two things had i have done things differently you know what i mean uh, yeah yeah and look those those things and then uh, again it goes to show like uh that's when it gets you know people on a bigger platform may not have seen that be- that exactly. act before yeah yeah and, and- See it, it gets over, and you go, "Well, crap! That was just me. That was just us. that would work, <laughs> right?" But you and that would have worked. Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent work. Heck yeah. yeah, man! And you remember, me and you actually, uh, we tagged for a little bit in Memphis, didn't we? Yeah, because uh, I yeah, think remember we, we took a picture for this getting handcuffed. Yes, <laughs> that's yes, a great yeah. picture. You remember yeah. that perfect <laughs> picture? Yes, perfect picture. And then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was it where we did the the chicken fight? You remember that? Me and me and oh, you yeah. and Jamie and Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How in the world? A picture did, of that. Is, and we're sitting here knocking some of the shit these guys do today, but we actually did a chicken <laughs> fight in the middle of the fucking ring. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did too, and it was like a main event in a show. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we made crap. it work. You know what I mean? It's just funny. Hey, but look, I, like, when you like, can like when you, you can orchestrate the people be. like that, man. It's like yeah, uh, like hey, dude. Like you said, you were just having fun, man. Well, yeah. well me too. You know, <laughs> and then all the then all of a sudden they gave me a million dollars. Yeah. And then, next, oh, old Jed's a millionaire. <laughs> and, and folks, raise your friggin', you know, <laughs> and, uh, and 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 uh, man, it was just like, woo! I can afford everything now. Um, and like you said too, I thought it would never end, right? And and I literally got released and thought, oh, I'd like to see how they conduct their show without me. <laughs> like, that's, what yeah. I think, that's what my thought process was, man. Uh, and yeah, I sat I Monday and watched the show. And I thought, like, oh, they just go on without they me. They <laughs> keep going. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and talk about this, too, because on a much, much lower scale, something that means a lot to me is, uh, like, me and Jamie being the – I think we had the Memphis uh, territory titles more than anybody or some shit like that. That means a lot to me because that's what yeah. I grew up watching. And, 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 and when we got brought up in the business, and you can relate to this – it was kind of taboo, man. You don't, you don't want the strap. You don't talk about the strap. You keep the strap in your bag. You know what I mean? You, it's, yeah. I mean, yeah. But, so back then it was one thing, but now what does it mean to you to be a WWE tag team champion? Hall of Famer. <laughs> that, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that too. Sorry. So, no, look, I, I don't know, man. I, it may, look, it means something. I'm not going to lie to you. The first time we won the tag titles, I wore them through the airport. 
um, <laughs> just as, as a rib to, right. to, uh, to Billy and walked through the metal detector and it beeped. And I went, oh, hold on, guys. It's my title. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, really, uh, I, really, I really was being an a-hole about it. But it was That's it was great. half ribbing on the square and people were going, what an idiot. Take that off. You know, older guys. And I was like, yeah, suck it, dude. You know? Um, yeah. But, but uh, so it means something. But also... Yeah. Like, man, I'm at a place in my life now where, yeah, it means something to my ego, but yeah. does it really mean something to me? Like, I got a title in a case at my house. I got a tag right. title, you know what I mean? Like, but is it my grandkids? Is it my wife's? Uh, no, I totally, you know totally I mean? get that. I just mean in yeah. the in the realm of what you did in our business, I mean, that's, you know, cream the crop yeah you know probably I mean? i'm probably the most proud of of the hall of fame thing um yeah. i would love and this is again as an ego thing i would love for me and billy to get inducted as a tag team um, i don't yeah. know i don't know that that'll happen uh, it will. because i don't come think, on it I don't will know that, <laughs> i don't know that the people who uh who make those decisions kind of see us in that light um and so i don't know we'll find out and, and it, it would be awesome if we did because it, it would make me feel like Okay, so I, along with Billy, made a difference because I do feel like, look, it's got to be justifiable. Yeah. The name, you know what I mean? Like you're not sure. going to put Bill Mulkey on the thing, you know what I mean? Like you're not going to, uh, and so it, so it has to be justifiable. If they put us in there, it would, it would solidify it to me. Like, okay, yeah. now my peers, now my peers said I did a good job, and yeah, that's yeah. cool, you know. What yeah. I mean? Totally. Yeah. I mean, honestly, you could theoretically be in there twice because you could just do the whole Armstrong family, just the whole family, just put them everyone in. And then at the same yeah. time, the new age outlaws. Now, let me just say this. So just like your pops meant so much to so many people, especially from my neck of the woods, the coal mining Appalachia, you know, working man area, you guys also kind of meant that same thing to my generation. So, uh, you know, when it's like 96, 97, 98, that era, I'm just graduating high school, not trying to be weird and young and all that crap. I'm <laughs> old now. But what I mean by that is, is you guys represented us in a way that hadn't been really represented before, you know, both with PG 13 and the new age outlaws, you know, you guys were yeah. kind of like the rock and roll express represented my older cousin who liked <laughs> iron maiden and Jude Priest. you guys <laughs> knew about the stuff that we liked. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Hey, and I've also heard, uh, via Twitter, of course, the negative <laughs> algorithm that it's Twitter that I have, a, I made a career off of appropriating a culture. Uh, and so, oh, so, so whether that's true or not, uh, that's, that's been said, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kids, right. kids going to school, doing the suck it gimmick. Yeah. You're probably got a few kids in trouble. <laughs> yeah. That person yeah, in school so suspension. Now I'm out, you know, Wolfie, now I'm out, me and Billy are out doing a lot of these signings and, yeah. uh, that is the number one thing we hear, uh, from parents is <laughs> well, they're, they're parents now. Their parents now, and they go, right. man, I got in so much trouble as a kid. And <laughs> Billy Gunn will just look at him and go, well, that's on your mom, man. You shouldn't have been watching. <laughs> <laughs> Who, was that you or him? Who came up with that? I think that okay. was Sean. Oh, no. I think Sean and them were doing that oh. before we joined d -Tech. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I didn't know that. So they were already jumping up and down and, and telling Sergeant Slaughter, who was the commission at the time, to suck it and everything. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Dog, we do a, a segment called Current Affairs. Would you mind talking about some current stuff with us? No. Are you talking about like the FBI raid on Mar a Largo? No, <laughs> no, no, no. We can if you want. I mean, <laughs> I mean it was more about wrestling, but you know, <laughs> if you want to talk about that, whatever. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. I'm done. Okay. I can't lie, though, dog. You tend to go viral on these. So. <laughs> I might be bothering you more than you even know. Okay. <laughs> so let's go into current affairs. What do you think about that? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. DJ, hit the music. It's a current affair. It's a current affair. All 
right, we're back with current affairs with Road Dog. Now, Mr. Dog or Mr. Road or, or Road Dog, one of the recent things that Wolfie, you know, we talk about you quite a bit. And, you know, he told me some things that you had thoughts about some certain current stars out there. And then I read another yeah. thing about you that you you kind of tore open the proverbial third eye in that you said that AEW reminds you somewhat of independent show with good cameras. Now I can't see AEW any other way. <laughs> so I don't know yeah. how that, you know, but AEW recently released the idea that they are going to have a trios title. So the old six man tag titles are now going to yeah. be extra titles on their show. So if the new age outlaws were right now, or then, and there was a trios title, who do you think would have been a good third outlaw? Well, I mean, I, you know, I stick to the, to the DX, I guess, and, and think about X-Pac as we did a lot of six mans uh, with yeah. X-Pac. But look, I think Wolfie D would have fit in there just as smoothly had he been in, the, in there with us. Um, yeah. Cause he'd be the type, type of guy that we would look for, but uh, you know, basically just white trash. So, so he could, he could fit right in. <laughs> um, <laughs> buddy. And that's, and that's x Pac too, I think. So, yeah. uh, so, so that's why we all got along so well, but yeah, I think, look, dude, let's talk about the trio title for yeah, please. What? Like how, how many, how many titles do those guys have over there? You know what I mean? Like they have a title for everything and everybody's going to be a champion. And, right. uh, Kind of like the uh, like little literally, league literally, trophies. Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody gets to be the champion. You deserve it. Uh, no, you don't. You're just a fan favorite. <laughs> um, and so, look, I think there's a lot of things uh, going down right now that are that are. You know, you mentioned the, the television product uh, itself. Like, look, their television product is not good. And and anybody, people can get mad at me if they want to. I think they got a great roster of talent, about 80 talent too many, but a great right. roster of talent. And right. and I think uh, their television product is not good. I think, again, they have a high budget for, for production value standpoint, but they don't know how to present their super, their wrestlers, excuse me, in a, in a positive light sometimes. And what I mean by that is imagine seeing Wolfie standing up on the second turnbuckle because he just won the match. You raise, he raises his hand, you get a good shot of his face. He's like, yeah, I did it. And then he hops down and starts to walk away. Now, don't just stay on him. You're just shooting his back. How do you, right. if you were going to sell Heinz ketchup at a grocery store, you wouldn't put the label of ingredients <laughs> out. You'd put the Heinz ketchup <laughs> label. You know what I mean? Right. So it's, it's just little subtleties about propping your talent up in the, for, for, uh, success instead of mediocrity. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's sure. okay. It's not the end of the world, but man, I sure would have gotten a love to get a, a longer shot of his face. And and that's, that goes with just telling the talent what you need from them. They'll do yeah. it. Uh, and then you get cameras around there and get what you need, but, but we all have to work together. And I feel like they're not doing that there. Yeah. Hey, you know yeah. what, man, let me throw this in there because <clears throat> you're always learning in this business. I don't care how long we've been in it, man. And you said something to me uh, when we had dinner that night at the up in New York. Uh, when I said, I said, man, that, uh, I saw Dan Housen come in, man. He's pretty fucking over. You said, no, he's popular. And that like, it resonated in me. I'm like, God damn it. I never thought about that way. He's right. Because. <laughs> So, so, so people probably don't believe popular. he can whoop ass, but he's he's got a little no, and, and he's not any good. At, he's not any good at wrestling, but right. his character is attractive, and and it and it gets attention. And he's a clever kid. He's yeah. a yeah. really smart, clever kid who knows how to present himself well. And and kudos to him yeah. for getting signed. I hadn't seen him have a match yet. Uh, and if I was booking, I wouldn't. He wouldn't have one. You know what right. I mean? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. When I saw him for the first time and I'm listening to his promos and all this kind of stuff and I see his face and all that, I'm like, do I want to look up one of his matches or not? <laughs> and then, then yeah. I realized I probably didn't want to do that. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You know, and you would have regretted it. And look, it's not, nothing against the kid. You, you, no. you work to your strength and not your weaknesses. And you, right. weak, one of his weaknesses is in ring work. So what is your strength? Your strength is your character. So get by on that and kudos to him for doing it, man. But you think again, right? 
Yeah, 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 I think so. I mean, he hadn't really done nothing. He showed up in a couple of key matches, like pulled out from under the ring or something. And so, yeah. I don't know. I think they're I think they're doing right with him. I would use him sparingly like they're doing, you know what I mean? And I'd also send him out on every single uh, AEW publicity autograph meet and greet thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like totally. He's always in character. He, he's clever. He's funny. Uh, the character gets over. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Right. You know, I always thought he should be like a Pee Wee Herman or an Ernest or something like that, where he could be this almost a movie star in a character, but I don't see him in the ring. You know, that's just me. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Well, I'm just because he's not good in there. <laughs> right. Right. And, and the other thing is he's not good in the ring, but also at the same time, what is he? I don't feel like they've done a very good job of telling you what he is, you know? Yeah. Explain what Dan Housen is. And look, I think that's where they drop the ball a lot too. It AEW is they just figure since the Twitter knows who it is, everybody right. knows. And if you don't, you're stupid. Well, what about the lapsed fan? What about the fan that's just clicking channels? What about, you know, what about people that, I, cause I'm with you. I don't know what Dan Housen is. Right. Uh, what's a curse? You're cursed or what? I don't even know. I don't get it either. Um, but I, I'm smart enough to know he's popular. So I'll yeah. utilize him for that. Uh, he's just not over. I'm, nobody's going to pay money to see him go for the title. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My final current affair for this episode, like I said, this is part one with Road Dog. Is last night we saw the amazing episode of the A and E biography on D Generation X. How was that, man? Tell us a little bit about that. So look, it was really, it was really a cool experience. They uh, came to my house and they set up movie cameras all over the property and and. Uh, and shot me cutting some grass in the pasture on my on my tractor. They <laughs> they sh- sitting on my front porch and and ask, answering questions. They shot me in the in the field with my goat. Uh, <laughs> so look, I, I had a great time. I guarantee you, uh, nobody was playing with goats on there but me. And so yeah. I stand out in that in that way. But I had a really good time doing it, and a really great time, kind of uh, going back and watching some of the stuff to to relive it a little bit. It just yeah. so happened that the, the, uh, podcast, Oh, you didn't know podcast, uh, kind of came out around the same time. So I was doing a lot of research about my career. Um, so it was all fresh in my head and I had a great, great day that day. I'm glad the final product was great. Go ahead. Take us out. Wolfie D. All right. Thank you folks. Once again, for tuning in and listening to live and in color with Wolfie D. Thank you so much, my buddy, the road dog. We've loved having you on here. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me. Uh, you, your family. Uh, I love you to death, buddy. I love you too, Wolfie D. I'm happy to do it, man. And we'll hop back on and do it again uh, because it ain't nothing but talking to a good friend of mine and catching up and, and, and reminiscing, you know what I mean? And I'm always down for that. Um, so yeah. Hey, tune in, go to a uh, road dog uh, R O A D D O G G, uh, links.com. And you can find the, the podcast. You can find all my social media accounts and everything there. All right, listeners, that is part one with the road dog. Come back next week for part two, where we have even more stories and great conversation. Thanks. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise, this team does it all. And all they ask is, give me back my pro wrestling! Every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's right, it's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, Booty Call and Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah!
Hey everyone, this is Shane from Insane Shane's World. I release wrestling figures of enhancement talent, mid-card wrestlers, and wrestlers that you never thought would have a figure available. So if you are interested in adding a really cool and rare figure to your collection, then don't hesitate to contact me at shamtheman73 at gmail.com. That's S-H-A-M, the man, 73 at gmail.com. You can also join my Facebook group. Just search Insane Shane's World. you're a fan of rock music i'd really appreciate it if you took a moment to check out my podcast it's called the decibel geek podcast we've been doing it for about 10 years now we talk about kiss we talk about ozzy we talk about motley Crue and guns and roses and metallica we talk about all the legends from the 60s and on up to brand new bands that you should be hearing about today that you're not going to hear on the radio it's Decibel Geek. Wherever you find your podcasts, you'll find us there. If you love rock and roll, I can almost guarantee you're going to love my show. If you're a pro wrestling fan, there's something for everyone at the Cheap Heat TV Podcast Network. From the Pro Wrestling Discussion Show, Cheap Heat TV Live, to the Interview Show, the Jackson Interaction Podcast with the king of all wrestling media, Gene Jackson, to the silliness of the Whitey Jenkins Show, and the brand new Zip, Xander's Irresistible Podcast with Charles Anders. You can check them all out and much more over at CheapHeatTVLive.com. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, they can find me on Facebook. Uh, my personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. I got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging, don't be hating, cause you're spitting the truth. Still loving it in color. Don't rush your mother. Utilize a hubcap. I like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD. And I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Tied us up as taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Lay low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks from over one or later. Not here to play games, so you better be aware. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. Like the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When I finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. Gonna wind it up. And I'm driving it home, it's Wolfie D, baby. Huh, I got a cap for your dome. I got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. We got a cap for your dome. 
This has been a James Rock Street production.